Hi guys, John Bill McGrath here from Forget to Tertia International. Wanted to speak to you today a bit about which grip to use with different knives for self-defense purposes. Different knives require different grips to use effectively. Let's, so let's uh, zoom in here a little closer. You can get a better look and we'll talk some more. Okay guys, when Tuan Guy first started teaching us knife work in the late 70s, early 80s, we were in New York City and he started us off with the size blade that we could legally carry, which is a, you know, four inch and under blade size pocket knife. Uh, you know, he came from a uh, tradition where, you know, in the Philippines, the pocket knife would be a balasong, uh, but the same basic idea. And he taught us to hold it ice pick grip edge in. And this really comes from our empty hand versus knife principle. So that, you know, if a guy attacks you with a knife, you guide the knife out of the way or the knife arm out of the way. Uh, so you don't get stabbed on that first attack and then you counter attack. And the idea of ice pick grip is it, it falls into that category very well. It controls the arm and having the edge in, you can grab onto uh, skin or clothing and it gives you a more um, secure hold over the arm while you're guiding it out of the way. When we moved to Texas, he went to, oops, he went to larger blades uh, this is a rubber um, trainer, the cold steel leather neck trainer. Obviously, it's based on the uh, K-Bar combat utility knife. And here, uh, we were holding it in hammer grip. And the idea being, his principle was, if the knife has a blade of your hand length or longer, you're better off holding it in hammer grip. If the knife overall has a a length across your hand, thumb to pinky, then you're probably better off holding an, an ice pick grip to get more catching power, let's say, from that blade, since you're not going to use it as a slicer. You can use this in fencer's grip or hammer grip, the K-Bar style blade. Uh, there are pros and cons of each. Hammer grip gives you a more secure grip. You have a better hand wrap around that handle. Uh, your thrusts need to be circular in motion with this. The Tertia 5, 8, and 9. Um, if you go to saber grip or, or fencer's grip, uh, I usually call it, you have the option of a straight thrust, but you can see there's a gap here. That's pretty easy to get disarmed. You could do knife sparring with, uh, let's see, we used to do wooden knives back in those days. We hit something solid like the guy's mask, and it's pretty easy to get disarmed, to self-disarm yourself. Translate that into the street, you hit somebody in the head, the cranium, or um, steel buck buckle, buckle, or maybe his cell phone in his pocket, and your wrist angles a little off, you can disarm yourself. So the pros and cons for each of these. You look at something like this um, Ontario SP-10 Marine Raider buoy. It's got a quarter inch stock, a pound and a half in weight. Uh, you're only going to use this, in my opinion, properly in hammer grip. But the advantage of this, obviously, is you hit a guy in the arm like this with one of these, and you can disable his arm immediately with one shot. So I want you to really consider that there are the, there are the best grips for each particular blade, depending on that blade's size and handle shape, and a lot of other factors. And I go into this more in the uh, article in my blog post that I've linked down in the uh, description box. So when you get a chance, please read that. I think you'll find it useful. Thank you.